The Department of Public Health and Human Services is pleased to bring you Aging Horizons. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Fraud, Legal Issues, Veterans Benefits and Caregiving. Aging Horizons is a program dedicated to inform and prepare Montanans on these timely issues, making a difference to you and your loved ones. Here now is today's program host. Hi folks and welcome to Aging Horizons. We'll be talking about Social Security today. It is over 88 years old and we have a national organization that's been advocating to the beneficiaries of Social Security for over 40 years. We'll have their president, Max Richmond, speaking to us, talking about what Social Security is, what is happening, what needs to happen in the future. Great info, stay tuned. Can you say ombudsman? Orm Bidsman. Um, ben Benson? Uma Doodlesman? Fortunately, you don't have to say it right to get the help of a long-term care ombudsman. If you or a loved one reside in assisted living or long-term care, an ombudsman can help resolve any issue. And these services are completely free and confidential. Now, why don't you try that again? Ombudsman! Did you just text me? I didn't want to disturb you if you were sleeping. Sleeping? I'm sitting right next to you, silly. There you are. Hey, I found a couple of Medicare helping programs online that I think we ought to look into. Hmm. It says if we qualify, we can get help paying for our prescription drugs. Oh, and there's a program that can help pay our Part B premium. To learn more about extra help and Medicare savings programs, call your local SHIP counselor today. Maybe I better text him. Here in Montana, we love our outdoor activities. Unfortunately, few of them are risk-free. Indeed, Montana is second in the nation per capita in head injuries that can destroy the lives of people we love. That's why you should insist your family always wear protective helmets. But you can do even more. When you fill out your vehicle registration this year, circle the Y and donate a dollar to support traumatic brain injury prevention and education. Now that's using the old noggin. You've probably seen some big-name celebrities on your TV lately talking about all the Medicare benefits you're missing out on. But the insurance companies who are paying for these ads may be pushing benefits not available in Montana. Fortunately, help is available from a friendly state health insurance assistance program counselor who can help you sort it all out. It's free, and we screen everyone for eligibility regardless of your zip code. It's Montanans helping Montanans. Call today. Welcome to Aging Horizons. As I mentioned, we're talking about Social Security Day. And the show is brought to you by the Department of Public Health and Human Services Senior Long-Term Care. And I'm your host, Brian Lamore. Joining us today is Max Richman. He's the president of the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare. We've done a number of shows with him in the past. Welcome to the show, Max. It's great to have you here. Well, thanks for having me, and good to see you again, Brian. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, but now, Max, let's start at the top. Let's define what Social Security is, how it benefits individuals, and then how the committee uh, advocates for the beneficiaries. Yeah. Well, Social Security is insurance for families. It is there for retirees, but it is also there for families across the board, uh, younger people, disabled. Uh, about a third of Social Security benefits go to non-retired workers, uh, younger uh, disability folks, children, over, millions of children get by in life because Social Security is there for them. I think if we just um, look at the term FICA, we all know that. But I don't know if we all know what FICA stands for. Federal Insurance Contribution Act. That's FICA. What is it fund? Old Age Survivor and Disability Programs. So everybody has got a stake in, in this program. Retirees, yes, but also younger people. Uh, a young worker with a spouse and two children has right now almost $2 million in value of life insurance and disability insurance. A lot of younger people don't know that, and they ought to appreciate the fact that this protection is there 
for them automatically through Social Security. They may not even be able to purchase that kind of coverage because of a pre-existing condition. So what we're trying to do here lately is inform people about the value of the program uh, for American workers and retirees, and also try to dispel some of the myths that have been uh, uh, perpetuated over the last number of decades, and hopefully we can talk about some of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the National Committee has been um, around for 40 years. You've been advocating for individuals receiving Social Security. Tell me more about your organization and how it's addressing those needs. Well, by way of background, the organization was founded about 40 years ago by a former member of Congress from California by the name of James Roosevelt. He founded the organization in the early 1980s out of concern about uh, the new uh, administration in the White House and what was going to be uh, happening to the Social Security program. And he wanted to preserve what he felt was his father's greatest legacy, and his father was President Roosevelt. So the organization was created back then, and we have uh, spent the last 40 years uh, with that vision in mind and worked to protect and expand and improve Social Security and also uh, brought in, in our program, our agenda, uh, what I think were three of President Lyndon Johnson's major uh, achievements a part of his legacy, and that's Medicare, Medicaid, and the Older Americans Act. So we've been on, on that mission. I think we've been pretty successful at fulfilling that mission over the last four decades. Mm -hmm. And, you know, earlier you mentioned uh, something about the youth not being aware of their benefits. And there's been some, uh, I guess, uh, public talk about uh, the youth not really being interested in Social Security, if I might say that. What are some of the issues right now with the youth uh, supporting Social Security? Well, I think, uh, well, first of all, there's... Uh, there's the, the myths that I mentioned mm -hmm. that have been especially effective with younger people and have disenchanted them with the, with the Social Security program, undermined their support of and confidence in the Social Security program. What are those myths? There's no money there. It won't be there when you, uh, when you retire. The money's been stolen by the federal government and spent on other things. These are all incorrect. Uh, younger people, I've seen surveys uh, over the last number of years that show that younger folks are, uh, are so skeptical about the Social Security program <clears throat> being around for them that they feel they're more likely to see a UFO than to ever get a social security check or, or see Bigfoot than ever get a social security check. That's wrong. Uh, the social security program has long range solvency issues that Congress needs to be addressed. The trustees tell us the program is sound, able to pay everybody their full benefits for the next 11 years. And after that time, if nothing is done to update the program, uh, the program will only be pay, able to pay about 80% of the benefits people ought to be getting. That's a serious problem, but that's one that the Congress uh, can and I believe will correct. But it's very different from uh, spreading misinformation about the program being bankrupt, broke, no money. The only way Social Security could be broke and bankrupt if, it, if we had 100% uh, unemployment and nobody was paying into the program. Obviously, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So what younger people, I think, need to understand is there is this shortfall that's going to happen in about 11 years. That can be addressed, I think, in a fair way uh, soon, I hope. For the last time the Congress faced a uh, Social Security shortfall, they were looking at six months to fix it, and they did fix it. So uh, I'm hoping that 
some of the information that we're able to put out on your show and other forms of media will be able to shed some light, especially as it impacts younger people's perception of program. Okay, well, thank you, Max. We've quickly drawn to a close on our first segment. We'll be right back with more information. Respite care is amazing. If you are capable of doing it, the rewards are beyond measure. Stephanie Young, respite care provider, on the unexpected benefits of helping people in need. Being a respite care provider is an amazing experience. It's something that what you give, you get back a hundredfold. You receive so much more than you could ever imagine. To find out how to change lives, including your own, go to respite.mt.gov. I think the most pleasant surprise when we turned 65 and signed up for Medicare Part B was finding out about our Welcome to Medicare preventive visit. It was free, and it gave us the opportunity to visit with our doctors and establish a plan for our health going forward. They reviewed our medical history, measured our height, weight, blood pressure, and counseled us on other risk factors. To learn more about Medicare's free or low-cost preventive and wellness benefits, call your local SHIP counselor at 800-551-3191. I mentioned it's free, right? Twice. I've been shooting since I was young. It's something I've always enjoyed. I wasn't feeling like myself, but my friend noticed. He asked if he could hold onto my guns temporarily. At first, I was a little shocked. But then I agreed. I think he saved my life that day. This is Bill. He just received his new Medicare card and is following some simple rules to protect himself from fraud. He knows to never give out his Medicare, Social Security, or bank number over the phone. And this is Nancy. She knows that to detect any problems, she always reads her Medicare Summary Notice or Medicare Advantage EOB to make sure the billing is correct. Both Bill and Nancy know that anything suspicious can be reported to Montana SMP at 1-800-551-3191. Welcome back to Aging Horizons. I'm your host, Brian Lamore, and continue our discussion about Social Security with the president of the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare via Zoom out of Washington, D.C. Rejoining us is Max Richmond. And when we left in the last segment, Max, we were talking about myths and what we can do to address some of those. Would you like to continue that line of thinking? All right. Well, I, m- I mentioned the first one that I was dominates uh, most public meetings and that the program is broke and it won't be there. Uh, uh, The government has uh, stolen the money in the Social Security uh, Trust Fund. Uh, What I I think is important to clarify is the way uh, Social Security payroll taxes are collected, uh, uh, excess funding uh, each that uh, may happen in, e- in any year is put into what's called the trust fund. The Social Security Trust Fund has about $3 trillion in it right now. And that will be drawn down over the next 11 years. But that, that has been a, a, a kind of a lifeline uh, for paying full benefits. You know, early in the pandemic, we had a lot of unemployment. Uh, that first year, not enough money came in and payroll taxes to have full benefits uh, go out to every beneficiary uh, that was uh, eligible. But everybody got their benefits, right? And the reason they did is the trust fund made up the difference. Uh, and I, I bring that into the discussion to just uh, emphasize that this is real money. It's there. And it earns interest. Not only did everybody get their benefits partially financed out of the trust fund, but the size of the trust fund grew because interest uh, was paid on the bonds that are held. There isn't $3 trillion sitting in a vault somewhere in cash. That would not make sense. Uh, the money is invested in government bonds. It, those bonds rolled o- a roll over uh, nearly every day. They pay interest, not maybe the best interest, but the safest investment possible. So uh, that's kind of the process that often is not fully understood 
uh, by the public. And it's really important uh, to understand the, uh, so the solid nature of the program uh, and the way that excess funding in, in any year is invested and applied uh, going forward to the program. One of the things, you know, Brian, you know, I've been, I've been to Montana in the past. I've done town hall meetings all over the country. Uh, and what I, some of the myths that uh, have come up lately uh, deal with uh, undocumented workers. For some reason, so many in the public feel that part of the problem with Social Security having enough money to pay, a, pay their benefits is undocumented workers are claiming all, all the Social Security benefits. That is absolutely incorrect. We have found, and not only we, but the trustees of the Social Security program have done an analysis. There are undocumented workers who get uh, uh, illegitimate Social Security numbers, and they and their employer pay Social Security. But those numbers uh, are not uh, adequate to collect benefits. In other words, illegal uh, undocumented workers are paying into the program and many times uh, they're not in a position to collect benefits. The trustees of Social Security looked at this and found that in one year there was a net benefit to the Social Security program, get this, of $12 billion. More money came in because people were paying it that would never be eligible to collect benefits. So that's a, a misconception that I think fuels a lot of problems, even beyond Social Security, a lot of resentment. Uh, another one I hear often is, well, members of Congress don't participate in Social Security. That's not true. Uh, since the early 1980s, members of Congress, just like every other worker, pay into the Social Security program. They pay uh, with withholding or FICA tax uh, from their wages. Before, before 1982 or 1983, that was not the case. But uh, again, these are the kinds of misunderstandings that I think just fuel a lot of resentment uh, uh, from the public and, and need to be dispelled. And, and the other thing I touched on earlier is this is a program that is there for younger people uh, as well as retirees. And I have, I've spent a lot of time, Brian, trying to get younger audiences to appreciate the value of the program, not just for their grandparents and their parents and for them when they retire, but right now. And... Um, I'm hoping you can help us get that message out. Uh, I did a town hall meeting with a congressman in Philadelphia a while ago, and uh, we had it at Temple University in Philadelphia. There were a lot of younger people in the audience. And when, when they understood that Social Security had a life insurance component, component a disability uh, component, that was, it would be there for them in case something bad happened in that family and a wage earner who died young uh, or was disabled, that there would be some money for a spouse and for children. Okay. See, and, Max, we're uh, drawn to a close on this uh, second segment, but we'll no, be back no, shortly no. and we'll be talking more about their cooperative work with AERP to educate the public. Great information coming up. Stay tuned. <laughs> Elder abuse is a growing problem, and it's happening right here in our Montana communities. At least 1 in 10 older adults are victims of physical or emotional abuse, financial exploitation, or neglect. To get help or report elder abuse, call your local area agency on aging 
or Adult Protective Services at 1-844-277-9300. Every 65 seconds, someone is affected with Alzheimer's or other dementias. Many become isolated at a time when help is most needed. If you or someone you love is affected, help is available, both for people with memory loss and their caregivers. Memory loss can feel frightening, but you are not alone. Call the free 24-7 Alzheimer's Association helpline, 800-272-3900, for guidance and support. You mean I can get help paying my prescription drug premiums? Let me get this straight. I could be eligible for help with my family's prescription premiums even though I own my own home? And our assets won't be counted. If you're a Montana resident enrolled in the Medicare Prescription Drug Program, you could be eligible for help paying your premiums. Call or visit the Big Sky RX website today to find out, even if you think you're over income. What do you know about that? I'm eligible. When I found out it was diabetes, my first thought was, Barb, you need help. You have to take control of this. There is help. My doctor gave me a phone number. I called and signed up with a diabetes educator. There is help. I have to put blinders on when I walk past the bakery counter. I can feel my blood sugar go up. You succeed a little at a time. If you have diabetes, help is available. You do not have to do it alone. Ask your doctor about diabetes education or visit Montana211.org. Welcome back to Aging Horizons. I'm your host, Brian Lamore. We're continuing our discussion about Social Security, where it's at and where it'll be in the future. We are talking with the president of the National Committee to Preserve Social Security out of Washington, D.C., Max Richmond. Uh, let's start at the top here. Uh, you're working with AARP. You're coordinating to bring an education plan to all Americans. What is this uh, program all about and how is it meeting your needs? Oh. It's a very exciting uh, project that we have engaged in with the AARP, uh, a collaboration to educate the public about the value of Social Security and to dispel some of the myths that I've been talking about with you. Uh, For those interested in getting more information about these events that we're going to be holding around the country, these forums that are being sponsored uh, by AARP. Uh, the website to go to is socialsecurityheretoday.org. And, and let me elaborate on that. We, are, we have scheduled uh, five forums around the country. The first one we just completed in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, we have scheduled forums uh, at the end of July. This is all on the website. Uh, at the end of July in Philadelphia, at the end of August in Lansing, Michigan. Uh, We're going to be in in, uh, Wisconsin after that and in Las Vegas. And what we're doing is uh, in these uh, communities, uh, bringing in uh, diverse uh, audiences to learn about uh, the value of the Social Security program and again to debunk some of the myths that undermine uh, support for the program. I should point out that all of the polling we've seen for years shows overwhelming support. Democrats, Republicans, independents for uh, protecting the Social Security program and improving it, expanding benefits. So we need to we need to maintain that support and in order to do that we need to really uh, spread the gospel what why it's important why do we need social security what are all of these misconceptions that uh, that undermine people's uh, confidence in the program and open the door to uh, i think harmful changes uh, that could be made in the future uh, and and some of those we've encountered in the past. Privatized Social Security. You remember that um, back in uh, 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 President Bush's second term. That was his priority. Privatized Social Security. There's still a lot of support for that. Uh, cutting benefits. Uh, 
you know, you had asked me what are some solutions, some proposals to deal with the long-term solvency of the program. Cutting benefits is not the right approach. And yet uh, we see many members of Congress, uh, members of the Freedom Caucus in the House, large caucus, uh, their position is uh, fixed long, long range solvency of social security by cutting benefits. Uh, let's reduce the cost of living adjustment, uh, raise the retirement age beyond, it's gonna be 67 for everybody very soon, but raise it beyond that. that those are cuts in benefits. You know, I've, I've met a lot of uh, uh, people, they find out what I do and they say, oh, I'm for, I'm for that, I'm for social security. But then when I kind of dig into it and say, well, are you for raising the retirement age? Yeah, that's a cut in benefits. The longer you have to wait to get your benefits, the less in benefits you're going to have while you're collecting. So, uh, you know, we want to make sure that uh, people understand uh, what some of these proposals that would be harmful mean. And we also want to talk about some of the proposals that we we support and uh, would you like me to expand on that sure we just have a couple minutes if you do it quickly. yeah now, i i believe in what we have been working on for a long time is extending the life of this social security program beyond 2034 for full benefits by bringing more revenue into the program in a, in a fair and responsible way. And that can be done by addressing the cap on wages subject to the payroll tax. It goes up, it changes a little bit every year. This year it's uh, $162,000 about. And after that, no more payroll tax and, uh, on those wages. Why? Uh, you know, uh, many of these town hall meetings I've participated in, people don't even know there's a cap on wages uh, subject to payroll tax because they just think, think everybody pays their social security on their wages like they do. But um, the proposals we support would adjust that cap. Uh, the last version of uh, legislation that we supported would uh, resume collecting payroll taxes at 400,000 in wages and above. That brings in more revenue, extends the solvency of the program uh, there are proposals that look at um, other ways that people uh, uh, earn money besides wages. Yeah. See, Max, uh, we've come kind of drawn, drawn to a close yeah, on this third segment. looked at to bring more revenue in as well. Yeah. Sorry, we've drawn to a close. I really appreciate you making the time to inform us Montanans about what's happening with your per important actions in Washington, D.C. Uh, thank you once again. Special thanks to the Department of Public Health and Human Services for their continued support. Hosts on Aging Horizons are program specialists at the Montana Office on Aging. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions. For more information about Aging Horizons, call the Department of Public Health and Human Services toll-free at 800-332-2272.